shall the new world say to the master of both old and new, the Vegas himself, the inimitable Bars, the great Charles Dickens, illustrious Dickens of London. My Daisy Van Cleef will die this, when she uh, hears. Oh, Fine, sure, grasp for the way horses, things are run in our little town, is your man, sir. It's so genius. But shrewd will they find the right pearl of this, our city of New York, which we beg you to wear among the many jeweled accomplishments of your I grand so repertoire of works, I know which I will, words. if I name, here and now in New York. Oh. Not that your so devoted readers need so remembrance tired. from me. Oh, don't you just want to hug him together? Thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. It's simply thousands. It's like it's taking candy, sir. Mountains of candy. Of candy. I say this with no fear of contradiction. David. And a great Dora. country, moreover, is proudly <laughs> Oh, Mr. Dickens, I do think your Copperfield is just the cutest little man I ever did meet. You well, listen to me like now. I swear your books are as alive to me as they are to you. Well, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> the foot chief. Hot, Dolby. Very hot. I think it must be the overheated language of our generous friend. But I trust you'll keep your answer short, otherwise we'll have them all night. Yes, Master. But let me speak first. I cannot tell you how often I lie in my bed in lonely hours of the night thinking of that poor, darling, Yes, I I do too, madam, I assure you. <laughs> Mr. Dickens, who of all humanity understands loneliness better than a gifted writer? And a sensitive widow. Emily, he says, I think I'm dying. The audacity of it, the selfishness. It's all very well for you, Albert, says I, but what's to become of me, supposing you do? I doubt I'll have time to think of that, says he. Best sell the house and move in with your sister in London. Ah! Well, I ask you, what can I do? They're a last for me, selfish. Thoughtless breed, these men. Dying on you for no reason. Ew. Maybe it won't be so bad staying with Dorothy, will it? Of course it'll be bad. There's another selfish bitch. Ooh, it's a selfish, wicked wall for widows. Mm. <laughs> oh, Charles, my boy. It's father. Charles, uh, how are you, my boy? <laughs> oh, what can be more joyful for a man than to be in the very bosom of his family, eh? <laughs> uh, Fanny, take the children away. Charles and I have much to discuss. <laughs> you're, you're, you're looking a little pale, my boy. Hmm? Long, tiresome journey, I expect. Nothing much to bother about, oh, come on. <laughs> Oh, it's it's uncommonly cheering to see you again, sir. Likewise, sir. Thank you, sir. Where's Mama? Uh, she's following behind, delayed by a persistent tradesman. <laughs> well, I, I hope you'll be comfortable here, my boy. Very much to my taste, sir. Well, simple chambers, modest apartment, but peaceful. What? <laughs> Harmonious. Just what the doctor ordered. Yes, so, sir. I, uh, I hear excellent things of your Chatham Scholastic, my boy. Hmm? Well, naturally, like myself, you have a studious turn of mind, eh? I've been thinking a lot about schools here, sir. I mean, your London schools must be very worthy. Oh, oh they, they are. Yes, yes, they, they, they are. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll come to that in time, eh? But all London is a great school, Charles. Whatever a man can learn, he may learn here in the streets of London. As the great Dr. Johnson once observed, the man who was tired of London is tired of life. The theatres, the bazaars, the caravans, Serrano, my word upon it, Charles, there's no other place to live. I see, sir. 
But wouldn't a place that offered so much tend to be just a little on the expensive side? Well, possibly so, my boy, and very shrewdly observed, eh? <laughs> but think of the much greater fields of opportunity, Charles. Mm, the streets paved with gold, the fortunes made daily. No, my boy, no, we, we, were, we were right to leave that petty Kentish village. Here's scope for great souls. So cheer up, my boy, eh? Hearts of oak, my lad. Something entirely unimaginable is likely to turn up at any second of the day in this city of delights. I expect it is, sir. Well, I shall help you to unpack your equipage, and then we shall repair to the dining room to taste the pleasures and delights of your mother's cuisine. Ah, oh, buck up, my boy. Buck up! The world is waiting for us. So it is, sir. So it is, sir. Ah. <laughs> Are we having to do with Frederick, where's Frederick? Yeah. Yeah. Frederick, awful oh, thing, haven't you seen? Oh, sit down. Awful thing. Take it. 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 Take Oh, how good it is to be back in the bosom of the family, eh, Charles? <laughs> oh, Charles, you're so lovely. Oh, Somerset House, which is, don't you know, the heart of our great navy. So he has, granted. But what he also has is a little matter of the deed. That foul deed persecutes us everywhere. Never mind, no. Here, get your teeth into that master, Charles. I've just found it, didn't I? <laughs> Thanks. Want a bite? Thanks. The thing is, Offling. I'm losing valuable scholastic time. Thank you very much. I suppose more lessons ain't nothing at all. Of course. It's all valuable experience. But don't you see, my dear Lawfling, if I got on with my education now, I should soon be able to settle the little matter of the deed. After all, it's a mere matter of money. The golden gate of which education is the key. You do talk nice, Master Charles. You saw a lot of rock for all that. Because we need bread today. We can't feed the nippers on jam tomorrow, Master Charles. I take your point, Orphan, dear. Oh, but... drop it, Master Charles, drop it. But don't you see, my dear Orphan? Drop it. What's the matter? Nothing. Something is. Nothing is. Really, my dear Orphan? If you must know, Master Charles, it don't relish a person to be called Orphan all the time. Orphan, Orphan. I suppose not. I never really thought about it. Well, think about it, then. All right, then. What is your name? What is it, for goodness sake? What shall I call you? 
Miss Crumbs? <laughs> yes, uh, Lady Blue knows what. If you must know, I don't have a bloody name. <laughs> exactly, I would call you Orphan. Or maybe an Orphan. Or got me right to a proper name that other codes do. Why not, indeed? Perhaps you'd like to pick a name for yourself. Oh, can I, Master Charles? Of course you can. Now, what shall it be? Angela, or Serena, or Faustine, or Julia, to stack up. Hmm. Betty, or Molly, or Lily, or Polly. Now, nah, these soppy girls' names. Hmm. All right, then you choose. Well, my very favourite name. He's Charles. You can't be Charles. I'm Charles. It's a man's name. All right, then. Sam. Sam? Sam. I shall make an excellent Sam. Can I? Of course you can. Sam is perfect for you. Perfect. Sam will do really well. Come on, if we get to the pie shop just before she closes, you get two meat pies for a penny. Otherwise, you see, the old door checks them away. This way! Just follow me! Charles, ah, a surprise for you. Behold, the Queen of Night. <laughs> Tonight, we celebrate our anniversary. What anniversary, John? Uh, some anniversary or other. <laughs> Poor boy, how tired you look. Not at all. And you look splendid, Mother. Ah. Oh, precious little man. Now, come along, my queen. <laughs> we must dance the night away. The music is playing. Our coach awaits. Let us away into the night. <laughs> now, don't stay up all night reading. You need your rest, my boy. <laughs> Good night, my dear. Good night, Charles. <laughs> oh, Father! Yes? Your boots. Boots? Oh, boots. Oh, <laughs> I forgot my boots. <laughs> <laughs> now the dogs of war being let loose began to lick their bloody lips. Now victory with golden wings hung hovering in the air. Now fortune taking her scales from her shelf began to weigh the fates of Tom Jones, his female companion and partridge against the landlord. Who is it? Who's there? Who is it? M Master Charles? Yes? I just wanted to say something, Master Charles. What? Well, Master Charles, you don't no need to go tell him one and all anything, do you? What anything for goodness sake? What about my being seen? Of course, for goodness sake! Oh. Women! waiting for, a boy. Who, Yes, you, boy. I don't see another young impotent strip loafing round His Majesty's navel. I have an important message for an officer of these officers. Oh, oh, yes, no doubt. You wouldn't be hanging round here on the half chance of whipping some gentleman's wiper, I expect. That is a slander, sir. What a knowing little gentleman it is, isn't it? I am waiting for Mr John Dickens, my father, if you must know. Mr Dickens, is it? Well, why didn't you say so? Ah, oh, here's Mr. Dickens now. Mr. Dickens, sir. Just been passing the time of day with your young lad, sir. Fine young fella. Father! Ah, oh, my boy. And what brings you to these hallowed portals? Son and heir, eh? 
Oh, jolly good. Well, can't wait, John. See you in the usual. Tally ho, son and heir. <laughs> See you later, Pip. <laughs> oh, excellent fellow. Rides to hounds every weekend. <laughs> in the season, full of arcane information about GGs, eh? <laughs> oh, first rate connections. <laughs> and tell me, my boy, what brings you all the way from Bayham Street? Mother says, will you send me back with half a sovereign? If you're not intending to return home until late yourself. A half sovereign, eh? Yes, uh, of course, yes. Of course, yes. She said you would know the reason why. No, 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 no consequence, my boy. Never excuse, never explain. <laughs> Excellent wife. <laughs> One half sovereign, eh? Yes, uh, she shall have it. <laughs> of she course. seemed pretty put out, Governor. A perfect woman. But... I put it to you, Charles, what are the best of them but frail creatures needing our continuous support, eh? <laughs> Never complain about it, my boy. Oh, a good woman is well worth more than rubies. But uh, she costs a pretty penny, eh? Oh, she and her heavenly cherubim cost a pretty penny and more, my boy. Still, family life is a continuous joy. I don't mind telling you, Charles, as man to man, I wouldn't be a bachelor again for all the treasures of the Orient. <laughs> On the other hand, and uh, from time to time, yeah, it does, in a word, become a little touch of a burden. <laughs> oh, who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat beneath an ungrateful load? I would, my boy, I would. Willingly, I do, Shall my boy. Shall I have the half sovereign for mother, sir? You, you shall. You shall. You know, I'm uncommonly thirsty. Hmm? Let us repair to a friendly inn for a light refreshment, and then you shall carry, like a small Jason, your little golden fleece to your lady mother, imprisoned in her fastness in the northwest. <laughs> Lay on, Macduff, and damn be him who first tries hold. Enough! <laughs> is a perfect lady, uh, excellent life, first-rate reading, distinguished ancestry. It doesn't pretty than a lady. Now, uh, very much. A very fine family, the barons. But along with that, all that, as with so many of the, the great dis <coughs> I claim your daughter, the great distinguished families of this country. A, a skeleton in the cupboard. Hmm? <coughs> oh, thank, you. thank you, my boy. Thank you. Wretched cats. I am whole cats, smelly, facetious creatures, fluxing all over the world. I always did wonder <laughs> if there was something odd about Grandfather Barrow. Odd, oh, oh, odd indeed. Yes, a legal matter of a fraudulent conversion of a small fortune, that's all. Consequently, the curse of the Barrows descended upon the Dickens family. And yours truly, in particular. Never complain, my boy. Never explain. Always take it like a man. Oh, well, well, get along. <laughs> We're home, Governor. Oh, home. Oh, home, Charles. Where the heart is, eh? Heart, my boy. Oh, wretched cats. Come along. Uh, uh. And if it hadn't been for Cousin Lammert here coming to the rescue, I don't doubt this wretched Scotsman Carr, or Kerr, as I would rather call him, <laughs> would have done us some mischief. I'm sure you exaggerate, dear Elizabeth. But it was a good thing I came home early, John, for this man Carr is a hard man, and it would seem he now holds the deed. The deed? Oh. Some 40 pounds it comes to, it would seem, John. Uh, can it be so? What? Forty pounds? Eh? 
40 pounds, 400 pounds. <laughs> 40,000 pounds. Yeah, what's it to me? Oh. Charles, to bed. John, the time has come for us to face the truth. Never, I say. Elizabeth is right, John. This man Carr is no petty Chatham tradesman. James and I have been talking things over while waiting for you to return. I hope you won't resent it, John, but I feel it's for the best. Oh, carry on. What? <laughs> carry on. I'm in your head. I shall take up gainful employment myself. Never, I say. And Charles also shall help. Oh, never, I say. Never, never, never. You, John, have no objection to Elizabeth undertaking this commitment? In my beloved wife's hands, I am as wax to flame, and she is intent upon it. It would certainly be a more profitable activity for me to utilize my training than to waste my life in cooking and cleaning and such tedious offices. Well, you see, cousin, the great difficulty is finding suitable genteel domestics in Camden Town. The truth is, dear cousin Huffam, unless we get more into the family exchequer, we cannot afford genteel assistance, even were we able to find it. Yes, things are so expensive in London, cousin. I understand your problem well enough, I think. And this proposition of yours will cost... Uh... Oh, 50 pounds should see us through the tunnel into the light. Don't you agree, my dear? I have a precise account drawn up here, cousin. Well... Does it take long to become a boat builder? Yes, I suppose it would. <laughs> you know, James, James, I, I was just wondering. I think perhaps a soiree or a salon would be appropriate to the launching of such an establishment, eh? Perhaps, John. But who would you invite? Uh, well, ah, you see, Cousin Hotham has an excellent Indian connection. Our people of the East Indies always send their children to establishments. <laughs> Quite so, John. Quite so. Yes, I, I, sh I shall ask them all. I shall announce the grand opening to the entire world. <laughs> uh, how? How? Well, I... I shall publish a circular, and you, Charles, will deliver it all over London. Governor, won't I be an establishment? Oh, tush and pish, my boy. Now, I don't flatter myself by saying I've already educated you far beyond the resources of any dame school, even one conducted by so unusually highly educated a lady as Mrs. Dickens. But, Governor, any school be better than none. You have great things before you, my boy. Never belittle yourself. Ah, here is the world, Charles. It's yours. Take it firmly in your grasp. Now, will you always do that for me? Well, I'll try, of course, Governor. But I think... ah, now, now, but me no buts. Now, look at me. Do I allow a little deficiency in formal academic education to hold me back? Oh, no, I do not. And Cousin James here. I mean, does he waste his life waiting for an army commission to turn up? No, he does not. Do you, James? No good waiting round forever, Charles. Best to take the bull by the horns. Exactly. And that's what Mr. Lambert has done, and become the director of an important commercial enterprise. I say, hold on, Mr. D. I shall only be the manager. Very fine business, James. First-rate prospects, Charles. Any port in a storm, anyway. Well, you see, that's it. An excellent example. Now, note it well, Charles. Time's a little difficult, eh? Never mind. All backs to the wheel. Eh? <laughs> Mrs. Dickens opens an establishment. Eh? <laughs> Your humble servant pursues his career at Somerset House. Cousin Lambert enters commerce. Cousin Hotham speeds the plough. All hands to the pump, Charles. Put away childish things, my boy. Oh, life is serious. <laughs> life is earnest. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's perfect. 
perfect, lacking only in the smell of ink and the perfume of Euclid. <laughs> and we have the complete works of the immortal bard. <laughs> A little Latin, less Greek. <laughs> oh, perfect. Perfect. This looks like a complete set. It is, it is. Oh, an excellent addition, too. Did you say, sir, that everything in this corner is a penny of volume? Uh, uh, yes, my young lords, that is my penny corner. Cash, in course. <laughs> in course. Quixote. Now we shall need a Euclid or two. What a waste. Look, it's fielding. We can't just take novels back, Charles. But let, let's put these Greeks in. Not a penny each. None of us can even read Greek. Never mind, it looks well. Josephine was his prime mistake. Yeah, yeah. F fine looking woman, they say. Not fine enough for L'Empereur. Napoleon should never have married. Yeah, well, every emperor's got to have an empress. That's fate. Take my own case, for example. George, stop embarrassing yourself and get off to the butcher for two pounds a shoulder for a stew. See what I mean? It don't matter who you marry. It's all done a scrag end. I can't shave myself, not with my shake, can I? Unreal and female. It's a question. Of the proper alliance yeah. at the right time. Huh. Napoleon at the peak of the crown princesses of Europe. What call had he to get mixed up with a ratty old widow? Yeah, well, man is a weak vessel, they say. A careful little nip. No! Only on Christmas Day and Emperor's birthday. Yeah, well, suit yourself. It's just that shaving gives me a thirst. Same time tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, good enough, good enough. Oh, well, now, my young gent, such a rare lot of books you've got there. Are you starting a library? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting on my linnet. Uh, <coughs> they are a penny each cash, of course, but they're only three a penny if you bring them back, mind. <laughs> no chance of that. They're for Mrs. Dickens' establishment. Let's see. I, I'm, I'm going, my linnet. Oh, look. Oh, how many have you got, gents? Uh, Forty items. Oh, oh, say three shillings a lot. This one, George, no. I'm going, my linnet. I'm going. Three shillings were practically the whole of literature. Uh, yes, well, when they're second hand, I do let them go rather reasonable. <laughs> I'll better be going. Oh, uh, you'll find that there's some uh, stewing uh, uh, strings somewhere. Uh, yeah, that's 40 volumes paid in cash, Mary Marlin it. <laughs> At least I shall have plenty to read in Mother's School. No, oh, come, on, Charles. That's hardly a manly attitude in the circumstances. Circumstances? Well, you must realise that the deed is still over your father. And now, of course, there will be the extra debt to Mr. Huffam. But father says that Mars' establishment can't fail to make a great deal of money. And I dare say he's right. But in the meantime, would you not feel more satisfied to be bringing in a salary to the family treasury rather than being a charge upon it? Well, well yes, I suppose I would. But how? As the rest of us do, dear boy, by taking a job. But my education isn't half finished. How will I succeed if, if I'm only half finished? A position with expectations is no mean thing, Charles. But, Cousin James, I've written some small things, and I wish to go on. Truly, I do. Indeed. But then I must read more and more and more, mustn't I? Well, a salaried position will hardly prevent your writing and learning, Charles. Damn it! Fanny's at school and everyone is thoroughly pleased about it. Fanny's doing so well and Fanny's reading the tonic so far. It's excellent. Why must it only be Fanny? Shame, Charles. Surely you won't be girlish about this matter. A young lady needs a little polish on her to attract a good marriage. But in a man's world, a man must work. Or oh, so I've always been led to believe. It's so damnably unfair. 
I hope you won't use such language at home, Charles. Damn! Damn and damn it to hell! Damn, damn and damn it to hell, I say again. Oh, language, John. I appreciate your passion in the matter, but I cannot and will not. And were you in a more temperate frame of mind, you would not expect me to countenance such language. No, sir. In all that I have willingly accepted in the course of our married life, I will freely admit that I have never been subjected to the mortification and, 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 and vilification of an impure tongue of a generally devoted and seemly spouse. Very well, my dear. I withdraw the language hmm, with an appropriate apology. Let that be understood, then. I withdraw the language. Very well. Let that be an end to the matter. Uh, no. No, I, I'm very much afraid, my dear, that it, it cannot be the end of the matter. Allow me, then, to point out to you, Mr. Dickens, that we have taken on a house for £50 a year, when we already have one we cannot afford at 23 Yes, but, but even so, my dear, I do not think that Charles And allow me to point out that we no longer have Cousin James helping with the rent anymore. Yes, yes, I, I, I'm well aware of, the, of the, the details, but you see, my dear, they are mere details. They do not alter or change my conviction that Charles is of a sensitive disposition. And, as and such, am I she... not of a sensitive disposition? Uh, uh, of course. Of, and of are course. all our children not of a sensitive disposition? Indeed, yes. <laughs> and are you yourself not of quite a sensitive disposition ah. <laughs> when it comes to needing more than a case of Madeira fortnight? Don't you tell me about sensitive dispositions, John. We are in a disposition where we need every wretched penny that can be brought into the house. And that is why I say that if Cousin James is willing to use his disposition to give Charles a start, why, then, we must give thanks to the Almighty for the six shillings a week it will bring us. And Charles must set his hat at a great career. In trade. In, in trade? And that's all, my dear. That's all, you see. I, I do not wish a son of mine to enter trade, madam. I, I see no necessity for a Dickens to enter trade. I will not have one of our distinguished family in trade, I say. Black, blacker, blacking, warrens, of course. Warrens, jet blacking, the pride of mankind. Give it a try and your death you will find. You surely won't be girlish about this, Charles, will you? Will warrens blacking will you? is the best. You? you can just will forget you? the rest. You? Warrens blacking you? is the worst. Black your heart and makes it worse. Dreams. How are you to have been when I was in the orphanage? All about 
angels and big steaming fruit puddings in there. I don't ever know more since I've come into service. What was yours? Nothing. I, I can't remember now. Is Tars dead? No. Is he better? Yes. Tars is better! Tars is better! Ian, not so loud. You should have been down with another spasm. Mother says we can move when you're better. Oh, no, Sam. We're not moving again, are we? Yeah, not in front of her. Sam, are we moving again or not? Who's Sam? There you are! You have your bloody wielding now! Oh. I'm glad you're not dead, Tiles. Will you tell us a story, Tiles? Do not test my patience too far, Mr. Dickinson. Do not flout the arm of Providence, sir. Do not invite the wrath of the law. We will not suffer a man to live in luxurious comfort and prodigality while his legitimate debts remain ignored. Surely, sir, you would not call these conditions luxurious. A fire, sir! A coal fire. A household staff. Mm. Food for all, no doubt. A fine London address and the all too common licentiousness of the Society of Government Clerks. An infamous race, sir prone to living far beyond their means. Mr. Carr, I'm only a few days behind. A few weeks, sir. Well, that's a short time in the life of a man. Uh, an unfortunate quirk of fate, a particularly slow time in my career when nothing of comfort or encouragement appears to be turning up. Pay your debts, sir. Live more modestly, sir. Well, no doubt it will change your luck. Luck? Ah, you see, that, that's it, my dear, isn't it? That, that, what it is. What it is to meet a, a man of the world. What? <laughs> Who understands the importance of luck in the affairs of men. What Mr. Dickens means to say, Mr. Carr, is that we have considerable expectations. Do we not, John? Oh, well, well uh, 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 that, that's it, you see, isn't it? Yeah, well, there we are, sir, exactly, that's it, you see. Uh, item, uh, my distinguished wife has undertaken the education of the entire brood of an Indian gentleman of enormous fortune. Oh, that is nothing to me, sir. Oh, but it is, sir. As our chief benefactor, you are entitled to know the innermost secrets of our tribe. Item. The, uh, the executives and the family of the late Lord Nelson have approached me to act on their behalf in a matter concerning a legacy hmm? <laughs> relating to the late Viscount's will. Well, I'd, uh, I'd better not say any more. Hmm? But, I mean, <laughs> it's a man of the world. What? <laughs> do I need to put a finer point on it? No, no, I, I do not. I can see you're with me, sir. <laughs> and you tell me that all this farrago of matters will lead me to an early payment? An early payment? Complete settlement, sir. Very well, Mr. Dickens. Well, I tell you once again, time is running out for you. But, as a Christian man, I will give you yet one more opportunity to make good your work. Well, I am grateful to you, sir. Mrs. Dickens is grateful to you. The entire Dickens family is eternally in your cognizance, sir. Good day to you, sir. <laughs> Madam, now, children, day. children, three cheers for Mr. Carr. Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Scottish beast that man is. What a Glaswegian monster. What the... Oh, John! Hey, God damn Leave me, me. Leave me, I say. <laughs> Leave me. Here. On the floor where I belong. Oh, before my very children. Oh, my God. Do it again, Father. Do it again. <laughs>
Excuse me if I disturb your honour, but this ain't your private study, I think. Mr Charles Dickens attending Mr John Dickens. Perfectly aware of who your honour is and who you're waiting for. And we still have an unconsidered bylaw what says no loitering nor vagrants. So sling your up, you snotty little tyke. Supposing I was to offer you a shilling, sir. Now, what would you say to that? I would say you was a proper gentleman. I might camp out here all night if that was your honour's inclination. I see. Well, sir. Well, what, sir? Ain't no taste in nothing, is there? Very well put, sir. I should tell my father your opinion in due course. And no doubt he'll see you right. Your father ain't got two acres to rub together. Everyone in Somerset House knows that. Oh, do they? Well, they've made a big mistake. Because we're just about to get a legacy from our grandfather, who was a slave trader in the South Seas. So there. Is that so? Now, some ever. You ain't supposed to hang around here. Hard oh, cheese, because here he is. Eternally grateful, you good. Just till the end of the week, you know. <laughs> what it is to have a friend in this uncertain world. Indeed. You can always count on me, old boy. Oh, yes, I'm sure I can. Hit, hit. Ah, my boy. No trouble back at the castle, I hope. Nothing as the way, Governor. <laughs> well, then. <laughs> what a pleasant surprise, eh? Do you know, Charles? It's a fine evening. Will you do me the honour of walking with me, sir? I will, sir. Thank you, sir. Walking, eh? Oh, walking. What a joy and a blessing walking is. Do you know, it exercises the physique as nothing else, and it trains the eye to observe the world. <laughs> and, of course, it costs nothing, remember. <laughs> will you always remember that for me, sir? I will. Sir. Thank you, sir. Well, then, where shall we make for? Hungerford Stairs. Hungerford Stairs? Oh, that's a very low area. But a slice of life. Hey, lay on. Sort of home sort of name, isn't it, Governor? Hungry? Hunger? Oh, <laughs> yes, I, I suppose it is. <laughs> Come along, my boy. Let us away to a friendly hostelry for a pie and a pint of porter, eh? Oh, this is a depressed and depressing place. Old Father Thames smells something horrid. Tell me, Father, why does our blessed, blessed and benevolent monarch permit it? Well, our blessed and benevolent monarch, my boy, is no autocrat. Oh, we English will not brook a tyrant who tells us to live this way or that. We insist on a free choice. Do you say so? These people choose to be poor? No, my boy, they choose to be vicious and thus become poor. But surely, sir, not all the poor are vicious. No, 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 some are merely weak. And what are we, sir? We? <laughs> My dear boy, we? <laughs> we do not belong to the poor. <laughs> oh, and Dickens could never be such a thing. And how would you describe our situation? Governor? Well, we are genteel, comfortably situated members of the middle class, <laughs> the backbone of England, who find ourselves in a temporarily difficult situation. <laughs> Poor, <laughs> poor we shall never be. <laughs> never. Yes, well, here's your precious hunger for stairs, my boy. A wretched, miserable, and unsuitable place. And I can't think why you brought us so far out of our natural. Yes, of course. Cousin Lambert's enterprise, is it not? Cousin Lambert. It was good enough to suggest there might be a position to make warrants, and I must conclude the business arrangements. Well, it, 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 it was suggested. Oh, yes, but at, at no time did such a course seem necessary to me. But do you not think, sir, 
So my rise from such a position to become a captain of industry. Oh, well, of course he could. I mean, it... of course he could, eh? No end of opportunities, eh? <laughs> I, I know that from my own experience. But on the other hand... I'm in a position to pay six or even seven shillings a week. And of course, that's only a start. Well, I, I, I believe that uh, uh, such a sum was suggested, but uh, it's, it's not what I would have wanted for you, my boy. No, I see. Since the pilot there needs to be no other school for me, I best help to keep us in our present station in life. Well, I, I, I appreciate your uh, sentiments, my boy. But, uh, but I, I'm sure it can be avoided, eh? <laughs> yes, you'll see, you'll see. Something will, at any moment, turn up. I'm sure it will turn up. I, I know it will turn up. S something must turn up. <laughs> You'll, you'll see, my boy. I promise you, something entirely unimaginable will eventually will inevitably Illustrious Dickens of London. Dickens. 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 Well, my dear friends, I hope you will forgive me not standing to reply to our reverend friends more than more than generous toast. The fact is, I, I have a foot which, though magnificently encased in a black boot, magnificently shining is nevertheless a rascally fellow with an ill disposition entirely of his own and a malignant tendency to punish me uh, from time to time. I think it may well be his way of protesting that Warren's jet blacking is not the pride of mankind. <laughs> ah, but uh, perhaps um, Warren's blacking is not familiar uh, to you citizens of this brave new world of hope and and opportunity, and, uh, and, and yet you have uh, many universities, magnificent universities, and uh, many uh, genteel people of uh, the middle class, and of course the poor, you many poor, since the poor, it seems, are always to be with us. As the bishop remarked, God must love them, for he made so many. <laughs> Very true. Where was I, Dolby? Warren's blacking, was it? You did mention it, but only in passing. Passing, I, I doubt if it will ever pass. Now, look, sir, you're still none too well. Let's call it a night. No, 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 no. The, the public waits and is hungry and must be fed. <laughs> My dear friends, may I... May I regale you with a story which I know you've already been kind enough to take to your hearts. My dear young friends, said Mr. Micawber, <laughs> I am older than you, a gentleman of some experience in life and some experience, in short, in difficulties. Well, generally speaking, at the present moment and until something turns up, uh, which I am, I may say, hourly expecting I have nothing to bestow upon you but advice. Still, my advice is so worth taking that I have never taken it myself <laughs> and am the miserable wretch you behold. Oh, my dear Mr. Micawber, heard his wife. No, I say, returned Mr. Micawber, quite forgetting himself and smiling again, the miserable wretch. Mm, you behold. <laughs> My advice is 
Never to do tomorrow what you can do today. Procrastination is the thief of time. Call him. <laughs>